Wallaroo. Not a kangaroo. She's a wallaroo. Grey. Shorter. Stockier. With a white tail. And there's another one. Just there near the top of the screen. See if I can get a bit of angle of the dangle. Still near the top of the screen. There she is. She's moving. She's sitting up. Can I get the both of them? Yes, I've got both of them in screen. Two wallaroos. Both female. Both of them live pretty much three, four hundred metres to the south of me, maybe slightly southeast. And there's there's a charcoal grey male. And there he is. Right on the horizon. Top of the frame is touching him. If I come up, it gets light struck because he's got the sun exactly behind him. See his ear on top of his head between those two trees in the center of the frame. There she goes. slightly to the left of the tree and the fence post. There she is, she's moving. He'll probably move shortly. There he goes. And he's Ooh, I can't find him there. I've got her. And there he is. Moving on the tree line, and there's another one, the first one, up there. One wallaroo. Two wallaroos. Three wallaroos. Above the fence post there. Almost the center of the frame. Oop, he's stuck behind a tree. There he is there. Damn, this is hard to see. Damn, they're good at putting their head just on the skyline between the gap in those trees. Right above the fence post there is the buck. Okay, on the left there's a doe looking right. In the center there's a doe looking left. And between those two trees above the fence post there's a buck looking straight at us. A complete family of wallaroos. Ever heard of stalk walking? You're not allowed to take any more than three steps. There he goes. They're reacting to the noise of a truck on the driveway. This is a family group. One or perhaps both of the does have grown up here. Maybe the buck was born here as well. Don't know. Otherwise, he's been pushed into here by the poor feed everywhere else. The fact there's food and water here. And the fact there's a couple of does who live here. The idea is 
you take a step and you stop and you have some trees to use as cover also the fact that I don't have any weapons means that they're going to stand a bit stiller for a bit longer I hope Some people would stay entirely still, I'm not. I'm continuing my narration. Yeah, well now we're listening to dogs on the neighbor's place. It's kind of no wonder that they're getting skittish. Well, it's not my fault my next door neighbour has dogs. You're on my neighbour's land. Come over here and you'll be safe from the dogs and safe from the guns. There's better pasture and there's better water. That's your choice, mate. Of course, I always talk to the critters. I expect them to be able to understand what I mean, whether or not they speak English. We're all part of the same biosphere. And I'm standing barefoot on the patch of the country my grandfather used to come and collect charcoal for his blacksmith's forge 60 years ago, before I was born. So I'm thinking he was born in 1885. Those animals and I have a stronger connection to this country and therefore to each other, probably than anybody within tens, dozens, scores, hundreds of miles, I don't know. We're closer together. They've grown up living here. My grandfather used to come here to collect charcoal. Perhaps they may accept me as being a friendly human face. Never know till you try. The Wallaroos have never come and eaten my treat food. They drink the water, they hang around. If I was anybody else, they would have run away by now, long ago. Once upon a time, 35, nearly 40 years ago, when I used to be a shooter, I killed a couple of black wallaroos. So I fully understand if their spirit guides in the dream time are telling them to stay away from me because I'm known to be a predator. Not because of anything I've done in their lifetime or their parents' lifetime. But in their ancestors' time, I have been known to kill and eat wallaroos. But that's a long time ago. And I have learned, look, see, I had that thought and he backs off. It's really, really weird how they behave as if they understand what a person is thinking. It's a kind of a case where I'm not a threat. They know that. But if I talk about once upon a time back in the day when I did used to be a threat, there you go, see, as he hops away, it upsets them. It's not that they 
uh, prejudiced against me. It's just that they remember what sort of a person I used to be. Sorry about that. Back in the days when I used to have a bunch of guns hanging up on the wall. <laughs>